You're not going to believe this. We have breaking news tonight. The House moments ago passing a so-called rules package that Republicans will use as a roadmap during their new majority. It comes just two days after Kevin McCarthy finally won the speaker's gavel. The California Republican ultimately prevailed after a whopping 15 voting rounds. But was he the biggest winner of this whole thing? Maybe not. According to some political analysts, the saga's losers might include, but are not limited to, Kevin McCarthy, former President Donald Trump, and Jim Jordan. The winners, Joe Biden, Mitch McConnell, cocaine Mitch, Byron Donalds, and Matt Gates. I don't know if I agree with that last one. Joining me now in studio, townhall.com editor, Fox News contributor, Katie Pavlich. Uh, so Great this whole you. thing, watching this play out yeah. day after day, vote after vote, it was unlike anything I think we've seen in our lifetimes. I thought it was great. Who were the, I, who were the winners? I, I disagree with the, the losers there. I think that the winners, based on the concessions that were in this bill that just got passed with the Rules Committee, including stopping proxy voting, meaning you know Democrats and Republicans have to they show up to there. work in person. They have to go to the floor to debate these things. I think most importantly, given that American people think that inflation should be the number one priority of the new Congress, mm -hmm. that they've decided that you can no longer just smash all these bills together for $1.7 trillion omnibuses without any kind of of sense of what's in the bill and also that or makes it avoids you know that allows representatives to avoid debating the bills on their merits and voting on them for their record individually it allows them to push it all into one thing and make an excuse up about why they had to vote for it yeah. that I think is a win it also curbs spending which is why I think some Republicans were skeptical of defense spending getting cut of the Pentagon but guess what we are 34 trillion dollars in debt it doesn't just target defense spending it targets spending everywhere and that's something that the, the country has to grapple with but Republicans, especially given their agenda and what they promised the voters on inflation, should be doing. Yes, it's less painful if you do it now than forced austerity, which will come down the road in five or ten years, yeah. maybe sooner. Yeah. Um, so what about Matt Gates? Because he really inserted himself into this whole he, thing. He did. I think there were other more honorable actors uh, who really were truly fighting for freedom and to yeah. limit the size of government. And... Um, I, my heart went out to them. Like, I felt for them because they are really trying to do what they were tasked with doing by voters. I felt like Matt Gates was starring in his version of the Matt Gates show. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, Matt Gates turned it into the Matt Gates show instead of it being about the task at hand. Now, Republican Texas Congressman Chip Roy is a very serious person. He is dedicated to limiting government. His record speaks for itself. He was not fundraising off of being opposed to Speaker Kevin McCarthy, whereas Matt Gates, even after uh, McCarthy got the votes, including his vote, was still fundraising and accusing him of being a squatter in the Speaker's office. So um, it's clear that Matt Gates was was interested in getting some attention, uh, but Chip Roy behind the scenes was really driving the driving force behind getting a list of concessions. You'll remember, you know, the accusation against the 20 holdouts was that this was just personal. For Matt Gates, it may be personal, um, but for someone like Chip Roy, it wasn't personal. It was a false accusation. And now we actually have a list of concessions that are pretty decent in terms of at least changing some minor yeah, things. Yeah, and, and that, you know, when we were having the debate last week, whether or not this is a good or bad thing, I was like, how else are you going to get change? Yeah, exactly. Unless people within your party hold your feet to the fire. So I did not structurally have a problem with that. Uh, Byron Donald's kind of emerged yeah. as a star. Yeah, that was interesting to see his name get thrown. And then he voted for himself. He also then came back around and voted for Kevin McCarthy. It's good to think about new blood. You know, the accusation when he was put into the, the his, his name was put into the, the hat, so to speak, mm -hmm. was that he doesn't have any experience. He's just a freshman. Well, the Speaker of the House doesn't have to be someone within in Congress. Uh, I know that they think that they're very special and that they, you know, have their experience there is what would make them eligible to be in that position. Yep. But actually, you can elect anybody to that position. Uh, and if people wanted him to be the speaker, then they have every right to vote for him. Obviously, that didn't happen. Kevin McCarthy is now the speaker. But I think it's good to, to really throw some different names in there, see what people think, and uh, get some concessions that are better for the country and how the House does and, business. And I think that's what we will be talking about long term, is some of the rules changes. Do they limit the size and scope of the federal government? They're too yeah. powerful. They're too big. They take too much money. So, you know, this may be the first step correcting course. Well, and some people have been saying, well, they're, they're so limited that it's actually not enough. And I would say you have to start somewhere. Yes. It's better than not trying to go for these rule changes at all. And the argument also 
also was that this could have been done after a speaker was elected. These kinds of conversations could have happened. Well, then the 20 who the wanted case. them, they wouldn't have had the leverage to actually get these things promised and implemented. And I will say, to Kevin McCarthy's credit tonight, with the rules package getting passed, second big test, the first was getting elected speaker. He wasn't sure if he was going to hold together with the more, quote, moderate mm -hmm. Republicans who had some problems with the rules package. They're all on the same page, as, except for one. Seems like a pretty good start to the 118th Congress. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. It's not going to be unexciting. It's going to be great. <laughs> Katie Babbitt. Good luck is good, as <laughs> the late Justice Scalia used to say. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Joe. Good to see good you. Good to see you.